Hi, this is Julian from AWS. In this video, I'm going to show you how to invoke a StageMaker endpoint from a, from a web service. As you probably know, when we train and deploy StageMaker models, StageMaker creates uh, an endpoint. And of course, we can see this in the StageMaker console. And uh, an endpoint is uh, uh, basically an HTTP API that uh, uh, applications can invoke, right? Can can HTTP post to to get predictions. So here, I trained an, uh, an image classification model uh, and deployed it, and I can see its uh, its URL here in the console. But chances are you don't want to uh, invoke this directly uh, because. Um, uh, yeah, maybe you need to do pre-processing on, uh, on the data that is passed to the model. Maybe you need to normalize data. Maybe you need to add extra data, right? Maybe you need to pull some data from, from a cache or some kind of backend because you want to throw that uh, into the mix. And uh, similarly, maybe you want to do post-processing on, uh, on this uh, prediction. For example, this image classification model as a 256 classes, right? It's been trained on the uh, on the Caltech 256 uh, data set, and uh, and that's one of the sample notebooks that you'll find in the, in the collection of uh, uh, SageMaker notebooks on GitHub, right? And Caltech 256, as the name implies, has 256 categories, which means if we predict an image through this endpoint, we will get 256 probabilities. Uh, sent back to us, right? And that's, that's I guess, not what we want. Maybe we want the top three or the top five probabilities for the top three or the top five classes, but we, we don't really care about those, uh, uh, those uh, very low uh, probabilities. So um, there are plenty of examples, plenty of reasons why uh, you need to have something standing between the SageMaker endpoint and the, the apps that invoke it. And I guess, yes, security and you know, authentication and throttling, etc., would be uh, <laughs> interesting things to consider as well. So let's see how we can do this, OK? So this has been trained, right? All you would have to do to replicate this, again, is just run this notebook all the way and deploy the model. Um, so uh, we need to build a web service. And uh, I'm going to use an open source project by AWS called Chalice. Uh, Chalice uh, is, is a really, really cool project. I like it a lot. It lets you deploy um, serverless uh, Python-based web services. And uh, if you're a Python developer and you've uh, uh, written code using the Flask framework, you will be right at home. Uh, because Chalice is really Flask for serverless. I'm not sure if that's the official uh, <laughs> motto for it, but hey, that's mine, and that works for me. So let's get to work, okay? Um, so let's let's look at this code right now, okay? And of course, this is on GitHub, and I will post the link on uh, in the description for the video. So let's import some stuff here. Um, yeah, debugging is important, especially for me, but you might want to switch this off uh, for production. So, uh, like I said, this is extremely similar to um, uh, to Flask. So we're we're going to define uh, a route, so a, an API, which will be the, the slash API, and we can post to this API, and this will be the only API in my uh, in my uh, in my uh, web service here. Okay. So what this thing will do, okay, uh, of course, is to make sure uh, we have some data in the body of the of the request. The data needs to be uh, a base uh, 64 encoded image. Okay, remember we we're, we're trying to invoke an image classification model here, so no image, hmm, no prediction. Then we need to know which endpoint to invoke, and um, I think it's convenient to store this in an environment variable. Uh, and actually, this will be an environment variable for the Lambda function, right? Uh, that uh, Chalice is going to create to uh, to host this code. Okay, so we can easily define the endpoint name in an environment variable, and that's convenient too, because if we need to update it, it's very easy to update an environment variable for a Lambda function. There's a there's an API for that, and uh, and we wouldn't have to redeploy the service completely. 
Okay, so uh, that's about it. So we're going to uh, uh, base64 decode the image. We're going to read the, uh, the environment variable for the, the endpoint name. And then um, there's an extra variable in the body. It's an optional variable, actually. It's the number of uh, top categories that we want to, uh, to get back from, uh, from this web service. So if we don't provide it, we'll get the maximum, which is 257, um, um, uh, namely 256 classes plus uh, 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 an extra class, which is uh, just a catch-all class in, in Caltech. Okay. But again, this is probably not what we want. So um, um, we'll just add an extra variable in the request body um, called top K, and this is the number of categories that we will return. Okay. So then I need to grab a, a Boto3 client for SageMaker. Okay. I'm going to invoke the endpoint using the name that I read from the environment variable, using the, the, the image that I extracted from the body. Okay, then I'm going to extract and then uh, those probabilities. And at this point, like I said, I will have 257 probabilities. And it, it actually, it is actually a string, right? It, it's, uh, it's actually a byte array at this point. And that's not convenient because I want uh, a Python array, right? Uh, um, that I can, uh, that I can sort and, and filter. Uh, because again, I do not want to see that full, uh, vector of probabilities, I just want to see the, the top K. So fortunately, uh, there is a way to, uh, to evaluate um, um, a byte array into a Python expression. Uh, it's called, it's the, in the AST module, it's called literal eval. And basically, it's going to take my, uh, my array, um, my byte array, and, and uh, which looks exactly like a Python array in, in, uh, in text form. And it's actually going to turn it into uh, into a proper Python array, uh, which I'm turning into a NumPy array because NumPy has exactly the functions that I want to uh, to find the top k probabilities. Okay, so first I'm going to build a list of uh, of uh, in uh, category indexes in ascending order of probabilities, and then I can uh, just take the top k one in descending order, obviously. And, and just extract uh, the category numbers from that and build, a, build an answer where basically I will have the category numbers and the probability for that category, okay? And again, in descending order. So the top one will be really the most likely and then I will have a few more as specified by top K. And this is my answer, okay? This is my answer. So that's it. Uh, that's all. That's the only thing we do. So obviously, uh, in real uh, in real life, you would want to do much more. Uh, like I said, uh, you would need to do maybe data normalization. You would need to pull some data from a from a cache, some uh, maybe user context matched against a cookie or something, and and then you would uh, inject that into uh, into the prediction uh, request that you send here. And then afterwards, you may like like we do here. You need to do maybe some post-processing, formatting, filtering, etc. But that's the, the general outline. Okay, so uh, we're going to deploy this um, and we're going to use Chalice uh, to do this. So Chalice is pretty much zero config. Uh, it can, uh, it can um, build the IAM policy for the, uh, for the Lambda function just by looking at the Boto3 um, calls that are done in the, in the code. Uh, and uh, so uh, that's uh, that's very convenient. If you want to specify it yourself, um, there is a oops, <laughs> there is a configuration directory here, right? With a config file, okay, which is a very small file. So here I said, hey, please don't generate the policy for me. I'm going to give you one. And I'm just defining that uh, environment variable, which names the endpoint that I want to invoke. Okay, and my uh, my policy is uh, is quite simple. I need permission to create a log for the uh, the lambda function. I need the permission to invoke a SageMaker endpoint. Right, and this is it. Okay, um, so actually, uh, Chalice could completely generate this one. So we could uh, we could do away with this uh, 
with this custom policy but just wanted to show you how you could build your custom policy if you wanted to okay and I, I would say generally in development mode it's cool if chalice generates everything but for production you want to tighten things and and uh, and, and you don't want to use a star for resources you want to be much more much more restrictive than this okay um, let's uh, let's deploy this thing so we'll just call chalice deploy so creating the package uh, creating the role for the function and of course creating the lambda function right and um, and creating an API as well okay so we should see our function there we go right we have the API uh, and uh, and uh, we have everything that how much time did that take 15 seconds I told you chalice is awesome it is really really great um, so we have the uh, URL here we could also ask it uh, just like this okay and uh, right we have a lambda function let's quickly check it is there predictor there you go okay and we can see the API gateway is the event source for this and predictor uh, is allowed to create a log in CloudWatch logs, which will be nice if we need to debug. Happens to me a lot. <laughs> and uh, it's also able to call SageMaker, which is cool because this is exactly the whole purpose, right? And I guess we see the configuration variable here. Okay. All right. So now all we have to do is invoke this thing. Uh, so um, here's, a, here's a small example of that. So I'm, uh, I'm grabbing the URL for Chalice. And as you can see, we could uh, also deploy the function locally, which is very nice when you are testing. Uh, Chalice supports uh, local uh, uh, deployment and local invocation. I'm going to grab a picture from a floppy disk. Uh, some of you might not know what this is. Well, I suggest you Google it. Um, but those of you who are old enough know what a floppy disk is. And uh, this is one of the images from Caltech, actually. Uh, and I'm going to uh, build an HTTP POST request um, with a body containing the Base64 encoded data and top case set to three, right? So I should see the top three category for this image. And I post this to the URL, okay? Let's try this. Okay, so here I'm posting to this API and I see three uh, probabilities in descending order which is exactly what I wanted and as we can see the top category here is category 75 with a probability of uh, a little bit over 85 percent so we can quickly check um, that uh, uh, that uh, category 75 is actually a floppy disk okay let's just go to the data set and yeah 75 where are you Okay, so good, 75 is a floppy disk, right? Okay, so there you go, it works. Okay, very, very, uh, uh, pretty easy, I think. Pretty easy. Uh, we can, uh, we could try another image real quick. Let me get back to this, uh, to this predictor directory. Uh, we have a hamburger, right? Everybody loves hamburgers. So let's just change this to hamburger. Hamburger, yes, sir. Let's invoke this again. And now we have category 95 with a high probability of 92%. And if I go back here, 95 is indeed the hamburger. So this works, okay? So there you go. Um, very, very simple code. Right, just a, just a few lines, uh, and it's very very easy to build uh, a public API that uh, that is uh, uh, basically uh, receiving uh, traffic uh, and uh, and pre-processing and post-processing traffic for your for your SageMaker endpoint, right? And Chalice makes it makes it so easy to deploy that right? it would be a crime not to use it if you ask me, right? Unless you really did not want to use Python, but I would ask you why in this case. All right. All right, enough uh, enough uh, cloning around. I hope you like this. Um, I sure do. Let's delete. 
our endpoint that we don't need anymore, or not our endpoint, our, uh, our API, done. Uh, that was quick. And uh, and again, I'll put the I, I will put the uh, the GitHub link in the uh, video description, right? And uh, that's it for this time. Talk to you next time. Bye bye.